Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Good morning. I'm still setting some stuff up. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Rosenthal. Good morning. Yes. I was got to was saying good morning. Hello. Hello. Top of the morning to you. Yeah, we were on 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah. See, what page were we on? We were done. We like what? When we last finished, we were like past example three. Well, we skipped these two though, so we could warm up with these. Oh, okay. Since we skipped them, so let me make this bigger. Your screen's a bit blurry. Oh no, it's better. Okay. Yeah, I just made it bigger. If you notice, I got a new whiteboard from Amazon I ordered, so. You got it before Amazon crashed. Yeah. I did, yeah, exactly, which was good. And I got all these markers, so I got like a ton of different colors, which helps me to differentiate stuff on the board. Oh. Never need a smart board again. Yeah, I wish I had the smart board is easier, much easier. I have to erase stuff. I also put a lamp underneath the board to light it up a little bit better. So the lighting should be slightly better than yesterday. You guys, my geometry group had no problem being muted and their videos off. So I need you guys to kind of do the same thing is we need to get over these little distractions that are, um, some of us are still doing. So if Brandon, you in your video. Yeah, close. There's a setting, there's just like a setting where you can force everyone to get muted and they can't turn it off. I don't want that though, because then I have to, I need people to be able to ask questions verbally. So you guys, you guys have to have the maturity, not, I don't have to do something to um, accommodate lack of maturity. You guys have to come forward with the maturity. You know, you have to have that. It's a good practice. Uh, that would be helpful if, you know, but I don't think that, that that's the problem. So uh, maybe, maybe <laughs> Brandon, can you please close your video and keep it closed the entire lesson? Thank you very much. Mr. Rosenthal, if it's yes, if sir. there's like infinitely many solutions, do you just write infinitely many solutions? Yep, right? or you can practice doing your set notation from yesterday. Oh, yeah. Snapple fact, one alternative title that had been considered for NBC's hit Friends was Insomnia Cafe. Hmm. Brandon, can you please uh -huh. pause your video? Thank you. Keep it closed. Can you look at the same Snapple fact twice? Uh, mm -hmm. All the time. Uh -huh. Hey, Brandon, you're, I don't know what's going on. Maybe you're not able to do it, but stop your video. Good morning, Mr. Uh -huh. Good morning. We have plenty of time, so there's no rush. You don't have to get on this problem right away or anything like that. But if you're, if you're just sitting around and you, you know, you're early, you might as well come in and start working on the problem. As people, we already have 28 people. Okay. Anybody's uh, parents doing the math with them? No. 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 Should they oh, be? No. That's interesting. Should they be? I thought I had a, at least a handful of parents out there uh, watching the math with you guys. I mean, sometimes mm. my mom does, sometimes she doesn't. Okay. No, they just leave me in. 
Yeah, I'm just using my laptop. You just leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, both yeah. of my parents are working. I see. I'm not even working. I'm working. Me and my sister both have sessions. Because you're amazing. I'm so no, like, I think they just gave up. This is the best part of the day. It's the only thing that kind of feels normal. I just watched The Mandalorian this morning, so I'm ready for this. Oh, good. Everett, you just watched The Mandalorian. It's been out for so long. I, I know, I know, but I just started watching it. It's really good. That's fine. Yeah. That happens a lot, where you catch on to a show that's been out a while, and then you, you love it, and then you got to keep watching them. That's true. They're Did not making the Gravity Falls until the fall. And that's, you guys like, can start making... working on these problems now. I'm going to put up the first one. We're working on that. Morning, everybody else. 34 of you in there. Hello. I'm definitely missing people. That's only like half of the people. It's about a Good class morning. full, yeah. It's but about a by the time we start, they'll, there will be probably over 50. Good morning, Mr. Rosenthal. A lot of people come in a minute or two after oh. 10 o'clock. Um. You guys can start work on those problems. <laughs> Equation solving is essential. You have to be able to be super comfortable looking at this. You should say, no problem. I know my distribution rules. I know how to combine like terms. I know how to do things on both sides to manipulate it. There is kind of an art to it because you have choices. Because there are more, because there's almost always more than one way to solve it, it's, it's, it's uh, subjective sometimes to what your favorite way is of doing it. So that allows it to be, you can do problems in an artful way um, and have fun with it, you know? Manipulate it. It's the same thing we've been doing for a while. Well, math, we've been doing math for a while. If you mean by math, but like this is slightly different. I mean, if this is from yesterday's lesson, so it's the same as yesterday. But before that, um, this is definitely more involved than from the other sections because you're doing, you're kind of putting everything together into a multi-step problem. How are we going to do the test? What? How are we going to do, do it when we go back to school? When we go back to school. When we go back to school, if we're not going back to school, then we'll have to do the second best thing, which is to probably all log on like we're doing now. And I will provide the test on Schoology. I'll post it. And then everybody will take it, you know, live. Oh. What do I put if what what symbol would I put if it's infinite many many solutions? Well, that's and infinite. You can yeah. both. The I and the R. Oh. All real numbers. Numbers. Or just say infinitely many okay. solutions. Thank you. Or the set notation. Set notation. The set of X such that X is all real numbers. Close the set. Is that an IR or? No, it's its own thing. Oh. It's like an overlapping, it's like two R's. Oh yeah. yeah. Or an R with a, a line down the middle. And then like the paragraph symbol. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. 
10 o'clock, here we go. Good morning, everybody. Let's get started. First problem. 44 people. Here we go. They can catch the video. We start on time. We have 44. Okay, so negative 6R minus 8, because it's a negative times a positive. These are like terms. Negative 5R minus R. That goes left, that goes left, so they go together. Negative 6R minus 8. This side is the same as that side. So it's always true. It's always true that whatever R is, that it's going to be the same thing here. So this is infinitely many solutions. Solutions. Questions about that? Can't you just put like an infinite sign, like on the middle oh. sign? Like a no. Because then you're saying that the solution is infinity which it's not, the solution's not infinity. It's so then infinity. what's the, what's, then what's the sign for this, if there is? Uh, there isn't one that I know of. Is that the okay. answer? How about this? Set notation. All Wait. real numbers. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, what does the R stand for? Real. Okay. Let's do the next one. 14 plus 8w is equal to 4 times the quantity or the group 8 plus 2w, which means you have 4 of this group. Okay, can't simplify the left side, so guess what I do? I just copy it down. But the right side I can distribute. 32 plus 8w. Then, got to get, oh, wait a minute. Okay. These are the same. This one says, so let's say that 8W is somewhere on the number line. We have no idea. It could even be in the negative, right? Zero could be over here, and W itself could be negative. There's no reason why W can't be negative. So this is somewhere on the number line. Well, adding 14 to that is going to slide it. I should not do a wavy line. Adding 14 to it and starting on the same place, but adding 32 to it, one is going to put you here and the other is going to put you here. These cannot be in the same spot. There's nothing you can do. Wherever 8W is, you can change where that is. Wherever you decide to stop, whatever W is, adding 14 will move it and adding 32 will move it to two different locations. Okay, so I can stop right there and say there are no solutions that will make this true. Now, if that's not satisfying, you can go ahead and solve it. Subtract 8w on both sides. 14 will never equal 32. So you could do this or you can do this. I subtracted 14 first instead of 8w. Right. And then I had 8w so equals 24, uh, or, listen, oh, that's 32. Listen. You'll get 18 equals zero. Oh, okay. Which 18 will never be equal to zero. Okay. Okay. Is 18 equal, uh, if that was on the test, could we put 18 is equal to zero? Or, I mean, it's. This is what you put. These oh, okay. are three, you can put this, this, or that. Oh, okay. 18 okay. equals to zero is not a solution for the variable. Yeah. They're not asking you about numbers. They're asking you, what is the variable worth? There's nothing that the variable can be to make it true. So you can't answer the question with something like this. This is an explanation for how you came to this conclusion. But it's not your conclusion. All right, moving along. Now, yesterday we went over into this area, I think. We did this one, right? I think. Yeah, we did. We did, we did that. Yeah, I, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. I think that was the last problem. All right, go ahead and do both of these. Take uh, two minutes. Go.
And if you're done early, go ahead and graph. That's a plus sign, right? Okay, thanks. Oh yeah, we have 55 people now, that's good. Not everybody, but when I look afterwards on YouTube later in the day, by the end of the night, I see that there were several people it probably doesn't add up to everybody. So there are some people that are not accessing this at all, but I think it's only just a small, tiny group. We only have 80 kids. Two ways to do this. Right. What you would do is you would, unless there's overlap, unless there are people that are viewing it afterwards and what, doing it live, is anybody doing it afterwards as well? Viewing it on YouTube after? If I don't understand sometimes something, so. I might. Um, sometimes I do it after. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. There's someone. I think there's someone waiting for you to approve him. I don't no. know. No. No. I took that feature off. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It's the waiting room. The waiting room. When I start the video, I immediately go and I take the waiting room off. So only the very exactly. first four of you that were here had to go into a waiting room. Everybody else did not. It says it asks for a pass. Well, that's how you join the the meeting, and that was that's on Schoology. ID and password. Okay, that's two minutes. Let's go ahead and look at the problem. Now, if you have other people that are having trouble, you can text your friends and show them how you got on. But we're gonna continue. They can always get the video after on YouTube. Uh, I'd like them to make it to the meeting. All right, that would be great. It looks like most of you are able to make the meeting. So it's just something that they're not understanding. Maybe you guys could help out with that. Okay, some of you understand already that the variable, you might want it on the left. So you can take this entire right side and make it the left side and take the three and make it on the right side as long as you do what? Don't answer all at once. Oh. Like my sarcasm? Distribute. No. Divide. Let me repeat what I said. I don't think you heard what I said. I can take the whole right hand side and move it to the left. Oh. Take the left hand side and move it to the right as long as I account for it by doing what? You flip you this it on both sides. Oh, you switch oh. the sign. You switch the, um, switch the arrow. I'll show you this again. If A is greater than B and I want to switch it like that, then B is not greater than A, it's less than A. So I can switch the left and the right as long as I switch the arrow. Got it? So you don't have to do it, it's optional. So let's let's leave it. Turn your camera off. Okay, 4x plus 8. Let's go to brown. Subtract 8. The subtracting switch and arrow. Don't all answer at once. Ha ha ha. No. Yes, it does, right? Okay. Oh, no, it doesn't. No. So you think it's if okay. I have two values. No, 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 it doesn't. Never no, mind. It, it, it doesn't unless values. you're like switching the entire thing, yeah. right? No. Because you're doing it to both sides, which means it's still Repeat equal. The no, you're supposed to do it when you're multiplying a negative. You're when, not when you're multiplying a negative, when you're multiplying by a negative or dividing by or a negative. Oh. Okay. So for instance, if I take the values three and five on a number line and I subtract two, so, both of them, this one is going to move down one, <laughs> two, and to there, and this one's going to move down one, two, to there. So this is on the left, that's on the right. This one was on the left, that's on the right. These slide together down to there. So subtracting the same thing from both is just going to move them together. The one that's on the right is still on the right. It doesn't change, it doesn't change their places on the number line. Only multiplying or dividing by a negative does that. So the answer is no, don't switch the arrow. I'm gonna keep trying to remind you guys, but you have to study it after you're done with this and you're doing that homework, you need to study when do you switch arrows. You really need to pay attention to that, okay? Everything else is just like solving a regular equation. No, nothing about this is different other than switching arrows. Okay, so you really need to pay attention to when you switch arrows. Take time, study it. Okay, this is negative five, less than, doesn't change. 
less than less, it stays the same. This is zero. Okay. I got it right. Right. Then let's go to orange, divide by four. One X. Now I divided by four. That doesn't switch the arrow. Negative five fourths is my answer. X, X negative five fourths is less than X. Okay, so how would I graph that? The bubble around um, negative five fourths and then you shade everything above it. What's a good thing to put right here to the left of that? Um, two. Or no, negative two. two. Yeah, negative two. Negative one. Okay, and then it's an open circle. And, and then, then you shade everything in left the... Left or right? Right. No, left. No. Left or right? Left, that's the way the arrow's pointing. Right. 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 Whichever oh, way right. is going on, right. we have right. different right. lefts and rights. The X is on the wrong side. No, yeah, the X is on the right-hand right side. So look yeah. at what this is saying. This is saying, oh. that, wait a second, everybody. This is saying that this value is under X. It's less than X. What are you shading? Are you shading the number or are you shading the solution is what X can be? Which one? The solution. You're shading this. Solution. You're not shading that. You're shading what X can be. So this, this marker here, which I put here, has to be less than whatever you're shading. So this is the bottom, everything else has to be up here. Now, if that's confusing, that is why I brought up what happens if you switch these in the beginning. Well, then the arrow would have switched at the very beginning, okay? So then this would have been x is greater than negative one and a fourth, okay? x is greater than negative one and a fourth, all right? So then you would know to do this. Okay. Wait, um, how'd you get five over four? Why didn't you divide them? What do you mean? I did divide them. One and a fourth. Well, you can, okay. So if you divide them. Isn't it 1.25? Oh, wait. Isn't one and a quarter 1.25? Yeah. yeah. So fraction uh, form or decimal decimal form are both acceptable. So I got everything up to there, but when when you started coloring in the number line, I lost you. What's happening over there? Well, how do you graph these things? How do you, you graph? Would, how do you, you graph would, greater than? You would take one and a fourth, and then you would take, and then you would um. Hang on. Which I did. Um, That's what this is here. Let me oh, get the other okay. stuff out of the way. There's your negative one and a fourth right there. Uh -huh. X has to be greater than that. So you take X is. So I leave an open circle because X cannot also be equal to it. Uh -huh. And open oh, circle. So and then the solution, which is what X is, has to be everything that's bigger than that. So I have to shade to the right of that. You can't just write X equals, wait. There is no x equals, it's x is greater than. Yeah. And actually before that, I had this number is less than x. I turned it around so that the graphing would be make more sense to the arrow. The arrow on, the on the test, will we have to do, will we have to graph it also? Uh, there will be graphing on the test. Okay. Make sure you understand it. I mean, it's not, it, I know we wanna you know what's on the test and do well on a test, but what way more important than that is, do you understand what's going on? If you understand what's going on, the test is not a problem. Test is just, an opportunity to show off your understanding. Just for, just for safety, we don't graph it in, in, unless it says to graph it, right? That's, that's correct. Okay. Okay, next problem. All right, next problem says four, times the quantity b minus three is less than or equal to 72. And I'm gonna go ahead and distribute. Oh, I could have divided by four, everything. See that in the beginning? But that's okay. Four b minus 12 
is less than right, right. 72. And then add 12 to both sides. 4B is less than or equal to 84. And then divide by four on both sides. Does the arrow sw uh, switch because I'm dividing? 24 and 21. No, does, the, does the arrow switch because I am dividing? No. 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 It does not. No. If you're dividing a negative. No, 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 no. Great. And then the graph doesn't say the graph, but here's 21. It's a filled in circle because of, of this. And it's everything less than 21. And I have to take you of trust. I'll take any questions now. And you filled in the circle because it's it, it can oh, be right, equal again. to anyone? Yay. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you think we'll go on to chapter nine today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. On the test, are we allowed to use a graph if it doesn't ask for it? Are we still allowed to use the graph? Yeah. I'm grading your what you have help? In, I'm grading what you have in your answer key. Did you already say the Snapple fact? Um, yes. I did, yeah. You can look at the video. Check the video. All right, we're going to move on to the next example here. Snapple facts. Example four. Mute. Mariela's parents have budgeted at most. You have to start thinking about what that means. The top. At most, $575. For her quinceanera celebration, okay, that's when the, uh, you turn fifteen. You can't um, see the oh, we can't see the. Uh, oh, we can't see all of the the problem. All right, thanks. You got it. Thanks. Okay, all right. So the cost of the party room is seventy five dollars. That's pretty cheap. How much can the family spend per guest on food if each of the forty guests? receives a $5 favor, like a party favor. So then, so you have to calculate then how much the, you, they budgeted at most $575. So go ahead and write that inequality and solve it to find out how much they can spend uh, per guest on food. Take, uh, I don't know, minute and a half, go. <clears throat> most importantly, I wanna see if you can write the correct inequality. I mean, it is also is important to solve it, but uh, right now, what I'm most concerned about is can you write an inequality from this information? One minute left. Write and solve and graph if you're done, might as well, it's just for practice. If you have any questions, you're welcome to ask. Retakes on Schoology, probably not. Probably not gonna be doing retakes. I don't have, my materials for retakes are all at school. I don't have them, I'd have to make a brand new test. and. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, it is what it is at this point. How long do you think we're gonna have this? I don't know. I mean, it could be, it could be earlier or it could be a long time. It could be go into next school year even. The CDC said that it was gonna last four to eight weeks minimum. Minimum, right. But yeah. maximum could go on to through December. Yeah, okay. yeah, seventh grade, because I don't understand what the whole thing about two weeks is. Like, what is that all about? 
I, I guess because the incubation period is two weeks, but after the two weeks, then everyone comes back and then everyone's going to be spreading the virus again. So I don't really see how that would be helpful. Yeah, it has to be at least. Yeah, why would they spread everyone guys, after? Guys, hey, guys, 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 let's save that conversation, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah
this, what does this mean? This means I'm not ordering food, okay? All right, and then the restaurant might give you a constraint. The restaurant might not have any items, right, that are under a certain amount per person, right? The restaurant might, might have a range. They might have things that are $8. Maybe there's a, a certain dish that's only $6. And then maybe they give you one that's four, right? And that's it. If they only give you those four, that's called discrete mathematics. So X is, is equal to a set of things, right? In that case, I can say that X can be four, six, or eight. And then when I put these two together, which one does not belong? If X, if I, in my budget, I cannot spend more than the 535. Oh, so oh eight. Yeah, this one I cannot have in there. Eight. So then, oh. Then these are my options. These, this would be my solution. It wouldn't even be an inequality. The inequality would help me determine what ends up in my solution. Now, none of this is what you're expected to do. I'm just saying that we, this is where we, what we want you to be able to do is to use the information. So what would we put in the answer key? X is greater than, less than or equal to 75? 7.5 7 per person, yeah. That was it. Everything else I talked about was expanding it into algebra and into usefulness. Cool. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's just do two at a time. Solve and then graph the solution on a number line. Oh, yeah. Go. Solve and graph. We can't see we can't A. We can't see any of the problems. We can't see A. It's we a can't see A. There we go. Well, once there one person says you can't see it, that suffices. So I don't need 10 people to say it. You guys are doing great. This is a much smoother meeting. Everybody's kind of uh, being polite. I think, you know, in the beginning, it's a really neat thing to, to be doing this, this new way. And so we get overexcited and, you know, I get it. And now everybody's kind of, okay, we get it, we're doing it. And it seems like we're on a, a good track here. Oh, I got 57 participants now. A couple people joined us late. One of the Snapple facts I had yesterday was uh, there are nine ways to get on first base in baseball. And I, read online, I looked it up. What are the nine ways? I came up with my own list of, of nine and they had some other ones. There might even be more ways to get on first base. Any baseball players out there? Heard of. Way number one. J1. J1. I used to be a baseball player. J1. Harrison. J1. J1. All right. J1. Thank you. J1. J1. You guys, please. Thank you. Remember, this goes on a video later, so we really don't want that on there. Let me start writing the first one. Um, oh, uh, should we graph these? Oh, sorry. Yes. No, no. No apologies. Is it A minus 3, right? Or is, is that a dot? Is it multiplied? A minus 3. Oh, I didn't see that. Sorry. No worries. Oh, you're looking here. That's fine. Yeah, look at the board. I, I'm writing it out. Maybe I'll even do one step here. Um, last problem was it 750? Was what 750? Yeah. Oh, yeah, seven dollars and fifty cents. Yes, it was less, less than yeah. or equal to 750. Yeah, it had to be less than or equal to 750, or else you'd go over budget. Uh, how will we do the test? Let's worry about that after next week. Maybe next week I'll have a better answer for that. But um, if we do take tests, 
in this way, probably have you guys all log on like you're doing now, give you the test and have you guys take it while, you know, while we're all on live and then submit it afterwards and give you, I don't know, 20 minutes to submit it after the session is done. Sure that it goes in. Open up? How would I stop you? How I couldn't stop you, so it it would have to be. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna do another step. Why, Caleb? I'm going to get yeah, Caleb. You gotta stop putting the video up. It's not funny. It really is not. Okay, so this one is a. This one's zero minus eight. How do you know it's me? You're the only one with a lanky face. Add eight. Okay, that's it. Any questions about the first problem? How'd you get from blue to purple, purple to orange, orange to green? Could another possible answer be A plus four is greater than or equal to zero? No, because to solve means to isolate the variable. I might have written. So just subtract four on both sides and you'll get that. You'll get what I have. You don't, uh, you don't have to put the five and the three on the number line, right? You can just put the negative four. No, I, on a test, I want the three numbers. I want the one that, that's in here in the middle and I want one to the left and right because I need to know if you know what direction these are supposed to be from each other. Oh, I, okay. I need to know that. I need you guys to be accountable for knowing that. And if I don't make you do that, then somebody could put the negative four and not know that, and then I won't be able to fix that for them. Okay. Wait, so. shouldn't you shave it on the left side? What? Shouldn't you shave it on the shade it on the left side? A is because greater. A is greater. A can be greater than negative four. What's making okay. you think? I'm curious. Why do you think that? Nothing because it's like because the arrow is you can put it going that way. way. The arrow is so going. I'm thinking the reverse. Way. The arrow's going It's going back. towards the right, so I'm like, so it's shade like, towards the right. telling us to like, you know, the knee reflex, so I'm like, okay, it has to go that way. Wait, the what? I was just confused. Just oh, okay, so what I'm saying is the arrow goes to the right, so it's the shade. So therefore the graph goes right. If the variable's okay. on the left-hand side. Sounds so good. instead of memorizing that stuff, you really need to understand why. What it's saying is that the unknown variable is what you're graphing. It's what you're shading is this. You're not shading four, you're shading what A can be. So this says A must be greater than or equal to negative four. So everything I have to shade, which is A, has to be above or equal to that number. So that's what that is showing. And that way, by understanding it that way, you don't have to memorize, oh, if the arrow is that way. Is that mic work? Yes. Okay, I'm going to do the next problem. We'll bring this up so you can see the next problem and continue work on that. And maybe I'll do one step. Do I have to switch the arrow if I multiply by negative two here? Yes. No. Oh, no, because you're distributing. No. Nope. Because they're moving uh, nope. with each Cause, other. Because they're nope. both the same side. Nope. Both nope. Both the same you're not side. accounting for the other side. You're just accounting for one side. No. Nope distributing this isn't multiplying by a negative like 
Ah, okay, that's closer to the answer. The, the reason is because the problem already started off this way. It was given that what was already here was greater than, okay? That is given. If it's given, then we did, not, we did not do anything to it. It's only if you yourself change it by multiplying by a negative or dividing by a negative, not what's in the given, okay? So this is still the same. And I'll throw in another step here. Okay, you know what I want? I like my variable on the left with inequalities. Okay, it makes the graphing easier, even though it's gonna make it negative. Watch this, minus 5K, minus 5K. Negative 7K, minus two, greater than, no arrow switched. Now, the variables on the left, there are no variables anymore on the right. Get all the regular numbers to the right, add two. Careful, that's left and that's right. And how about some purple? Ah, finally, now, as is, the arrow is the way it is, but I'm going to manipulate it. Here, here's where you really, you really got to watch. I am going to divide by negative seven on both sides. That wherever these numbers are now, they're going to go to the opposite side of zero when you divide by a negative. Okay, that changes what side of zero each one is on. So, the, so it flips. It flips. So that 1K is less than positive two. I need you to look at that and understand that. Even if, the, even if the, a number starts out as negative, when you divide by a negative, a negative divided by a negative, it's gonna jump to the positive side, okay? If a number starts out on the positive side and you divide by a negative, positive divided by a negative, it's going to jump to the negative side. So it really doesn't matter if you started with a negative or started with a positive. It doesn't matter. If you do, if you do something to the problem and that thing is dividing or multiplying by a negative, it will switch the way that the, the left and the right are related to one another. Mr. Rosenblum? Uh-huh. There's, there's like one, wait, this is for B, right? Yeah. There's like one way where you where you don't have to divide by a negative uh by a negative number so then you don't have to flip it but you still get the same answer. Okay. It's from pink to I think blue. I um added by 2k on both sides. Right. So you put it on the right hand side. Now you don't have a negative to divide by, but your variable's on the right-hand side. And if your variable's on the right-hand side and you want to move it to the left-hand side, that's what's going to flip the arrow. Yeah. Yeah. So the arrow can flip by switching the right and the left, just switching them. If A is greater than B and then switch it, B is less than A. So switching them switches the arrow. Yeah, you would accomplish it that way, yes. Any questions about this problem? No? Okie dokie. We're going to come back and we're going to scroll down. Time. Everybody do this one. Never mind. No more time. We're just getting lots of practice here.
<clears throat> Mr. Lewis, JK. Who is Mr. Everett. That's Everett. Everett. Okay. I'm going to take a first step here. Distribute. That's right. By now, you've seen me distribute 30, 40, 50 times, and hopefully, you guys got it down now. Okay, if I subtract 3p, I'm going to get negative p. If you have negative for your variable, it's going to end up switching the arrow later. If you don't want to do that, you could subtract 2p over, but then your variable's on the right hand side. So you're going to have to deal with something that maybe makes your brain a little uncomfortable, but hopefully only a, li a little bit. So um, I'm going to subtract 3p and get negative p plus 5. And if you like on 1 there, that's fine too. Subtract 5. negative 1p greater than or equal to, this is left and that's left. So they're both going to the left. And... Can we graph it? Yep. Okay, now, in the beginning, if I would have subtracted 2p, then I would have had positive 1p over here but then you, would, you might want to have the variable on the left, then you'd have to switch the arrow. Here, if you multiply or divide by negative 1, it's going to switch the arrow. So now positive p is less than or equal to positive 23. There's 23, there's 22, there's 24. It can be equal to less than. Why do you like having the variable on the oh. left side? Because then the arrow matches the shading. Oh, okay. But if you, if it's okay if you have it on the right side, just totally. as long as you understand. Three right? is greater than or equal to p. Just as long as you understand which way to put the arrow on the um, graph is the same. One. Graph is the same for both. Okay. That's the graph cool. for both of these. Look cool. at the arrows are different, and yet it's shaded to the left. Okay. I hope everybody can see that. Just because the arrow points to the right, Ethan, see that? Arrow pointing to the right, but it's shaded to the left. That's why you don't want to just memorize, oh, I'm going to shade the direction of the arrow. No. You have to understand what it's saying. Follow video off. Is it accidental that you guys are doing the video? or are you uh, Something just glitched out. What's that? No questions? Okay, I'm going to move ahead. All right, favorite part. That's it, folks. That wraps up the chapter. So you, you, were, you were doing everything oh, right cool. there. We can't see the screen. I, I know. Bella, why you say that? Why are you yelling at me? No, I'm just kidding. Why are you bullying me? So it's a good idea to do this whole why not? day while it's fresh in your head and get that repetition in there. Okay, you guys got to see these problems over and over and over again. So, um, so yeah, um, yeah. All right, so at this point we can go into nine or we can review eight. And I think you that it. review, not review. That it's not super eight? hold on hold on let's go into hold on hold on it's not super efficient i think to do a review and then take a test weeks from now and then do another review whereas we could just save the review for when we're going to do the test so i think right. we just move on in yeah, nine yeah you know, so just just go 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 okay so hopefully everybody's got that homework written down i'm going to go ahead and open up nine one This one is, looks like 9-1. And I'm going to make this much bigger. Let's go 250. 
Uh, that's a little bit. Turn off their music. No, you guys should be muted pretty much. You can much. mute yourself, gamer. You guys, no name calling. Ah. Okay. Gamer is a good thing. Mute Try yourself. This. Try this problem, please. Is this a challenge problem? Uh, yeah, they always are. Every time, every single warm up that starts a new lesson is a challenge problem. Okay. Oh, it's a good thing Jasper had mentioned his other way of doing the problem. That kind of gives this away I did. on how to do this without multiplying or dividing by a negative. I did the I did the lesson I did nine point one and like all the other lessons ahead of me. I did I looked at them. Don't you just switch the arrow and switch the number? Uh, don't let you do the problem and then we'll talk about it in just a moment. Let everybody else try to figure it out on their own. Mute yourself. Yep. Yeah, you guys, mute mute unless you have a comment or a question. Or it, you, I don't mind if you're unmuted if you're not making background noise. Your mic is broken. Was broken. Rip. I left and then oh. it fixed. Oh, good. Okay. Rip. There's not going to be a final chapter, Apollo. I'm going to keep going. So when the book is done, plenty of math. I'll just, you know, start teaching you new things. And uh, I haven't decided what that's going to be, but that's the fun part. So I'll come up with, um, you know, I'll take you guys into algebra. You're, you'll be surprised how well prepared you are. You're, you're going to, it's going to seem pretty smooth, the transition, because you've been doing algebra the whole way. I've been throwing it in the whole way along the way. So we can just start algebra before even being in algebra, and well, then we go into algebra well, once we know everything? Let's, let's wait and see what happens. Okay, so in the end, if I in go way. normally, I would subtract three, right? Subtract three, and then I would divide by negative six, and then it would switch the arrow. This problem is saying, how do I do it without doing that? Okay. Well, how about I add, if adding 6x to both sides does not switch the arrow. And you cannot add these. They are not like terms. So you just have 6x plus 45. That's all you can do is greater than 3. And I did not switch the arrow. And then you can subtract 45. Six Why can't you switch the arrow, though? Why would I switch the arrow? It says... I mean, so that you don't... It says without multiplying or dividing by a negative number, but if using the symmetric property, you can just flip all of them. Well, the symmetric property is for equality, but I know what you mean. I oh. could put this onto the other side. And then you wouldn't be dividing by negative six. Uh, no. If I move this whole thing as is to this side... Oh, oh, oh never mind. ...to the other mind. side... You would have to switch the arrow to do that. But you, oh, okay. What I'm doing is different. I'm adding the opposite to zero it out is a different thing. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. And then this is right and left. So this is negative 42. And what that does is it moves the, it moves the variable to the other side. Right. I added it to both sides. Okay. That zeroes it out on this side, but now it's added to the left, and now it shows up over here. And then there are no more. Thanks. Now I'm dividing, and now I'm not dividing by a negative number. Okay? X is greater than negative 7. Okay? We can't see. Any questions about that? Got kicked out and then put back in. Okay. All right, moving along. Linear functions, yay. Okay. So slope intercept form, look at that. 
So now we're getting into it. This is, this is a connector now. You've been learning about this the whole time, right? I've been telling you Y equals MX plus B. I've been giving, kind of giving away the ending the whole time, just letting it seep into class over and over again so that this will not be new, even though I'm, I wasn't supposed to tell you about it until now. This was supposed to be the first time that I'm telling you about Y equals MX plus B. So you weren't supposed to tell us about Y equals MX plus B. I couldn't, I couldn't keep a secret. I'm sorry. It just was. Okay. You told us about it the first day we came in class. You were like, okay, so this is slope and this is. Exactly. That's because I've done, I've done this a couple times before. So I, I, know, I know that it's important and that it connects. Is this lesson slope or a linear function? Okay, so hold on. Hey, you guys, let's mute. So we're going to learn what a function is. This is going to take us on into algebra and calculus and on. You're going to be dealing with functions. Okay. Now in our class, we're not going beyond linear functions. If we have extra time at the end of the year, I might be able to show you guys some quadratic functions. Okay. Um, direct variation is, does anybody remember what I said about direct variation? Nope. Anybody have any idea? Not a clue. No. That's when the y-intercept is, Oops. fill in the blank, when the y-intercept is? Negative? No. Positive. Oh, no. No. Is it imaginary? No. I don't know. Okay, let me tell you, it's when, it's when the linear function represents <laughs> proportion. Oh, 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 You're interrupting me right in the middle of an idea. You guys got to be quiet. Charlie. You, no, mute yourself, please. The direct variation is when the linear function is representing proportionality. What did we say has to be true for a line to represent proportionality? First it has of all, to it has go to through be the a origin. line. The line has to go through the origin, which means the y-intercept is what? Zero. Yes. So direct variation is when Zero. it's proportional. That's what that section is all about. Now, we've already done a lot of stuff on that. We're going to solve systems of equations by graphing. That used to be only in algebra. Now they're doing it earlier. So in the old, in the old when I was teaching algebra back at Millikan, you didn't do systems of equations until halfway through the algebra course. So now it's part of your pre-algebra curriculum. All right, so, but we've already done that. That's where two lines do what? Where's the solution to a system? It's where two lines what? Interesting. Oh. No, I was going to say that. Damn. How many points do two lines intersect at? One. Five. One. And that point has an X and a Y. So solving for X and for Y gives you an X, Y where the two lines are meeting. Okay, so that's what that's going to be. Is that how, like, latitude and longitude and pointing stuff works? Mm, sure. Because you have longitude and latitude meeting at a location. Yeah, because it's yeah. coordinates. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right, nine one. Let's get into it now. Functions. We have to determine whether something is a function or not or not. And then we have to be able to write a function using new notation I'm gonna give you. Okay. All right, let's get going. Relations and function. All right, let's talk about this. A relation. A relation is a set of points, which could just be one point where an X and a Y are related. Now, what I want to do is I want to think of X as an input and Y as an output. So what I get out of something is connected to what I put in, right? You have that saying, whatever you get, whatever you, you only get out what you put in, right? That's what a function is, basically, is that this is related to that one. Okay, so a relation is any set of points that are related to each other where uh, with X's and Y's. So X1, Y1, X2 causes Y2, and really the independent variable X, independent, and then this one is the dependent. The Y is always gonna depend on what X is. X, you're free to choose, okay? X is free to choose. And then whatever you put in, you're going to get out something from it. Okay? And that's basically a relation. Frozen. 
It's frozen. It's frozen. It's frozen. It's slow. Frozen. Mine is frozen. Keep ah, I'm gonna die. Ah, I'm hey, gonna stop. Die don't now. talk like that. Um, so you're saying my screen is frozen? Hello? Hello, did I lose everybody?